Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, listeners. Welcome to Business Innovators Radio. This is your host, Constant Taylor. Today, we have a very special guest on the show, and they're going to share some very exciting information with us. So, if you're looking to increase your personal and professional effectiveness, then you've come to the right place. Our special guest today is Thomas Dowd. Tom has been speaking professionally for over five years, and the content that he primarily speaks on is time management, networking, and public speaking. He has spoken both nationally and internationally, and he's based out of Maine. Tom, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me. And we're glad that you could make it. I'd like to kick off the show by asking you if you could tell the listeners a little bit about your business and how you help your clients become more effective. Well, I try to spend uh, some time with them to so they so they can understand who they really are. My business mantra is transform into who you really want to be professionally. And so I take people by their hand and I walk them down the hall with me so they can then figure out on their own through support and assistance that they can really thrive professionally. A lot of people go into the workplace trying to just survive. And I try to teach people how to thrive by transforming into who they want to be. And there are three target groups that I work with. You have the corporate employers, those that are leading the efforts of others who are willing to invest in their employees and try to give them the spark that they need to strengthen that employee-employer relationship. I also have the stagnant group. I like to work with the stagnant or disengaged employees. And if you were to read the numbers, they're staggering on how many people are disengaged in the workplace today. Mm -hmm. And I go in there to try to give them the spark that they need uh, to work on whether it is working on their time management, their communication skills, or whether it's uh, to network to become a little bit more effective, it's to give them that spark to say, hey, I can make a difference here. And then you have uh, the prospective group. You have people that are graduating from college. You have uh, the unemployed group. You have job seekers. And, and there are so many people that have applications out there, resumes floating around that are seeking jobs, even though that they're currently employed. I spend time with them to, to give them that competitive edge because it's really about not being among the masses. I try to teach people how to differentiate themselves among the masses. Mm. So what are a couple of popular misconceptions about the services that you provide and how do you dispel those? Well, we'll start with time management. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> says, I don't have time. How many times have you heard that? I don't mm. have time. Yes. We, we think we're at the mercy of everyone else or everything else. We're at the mercy of our boss. We're at the mercy of our children. We're at the mercy of other people's schedules. But the misconception is we do have much more control than we think. And the solution comes with commitment, routines, flexibility, making the adjustments on the fly, and planning. The solution is not on some smartphone app somewhere. I was listening to a podcast the other day, and they were talking about this great time management app that I was out there, that's out there. And I, I was just laughing to myself <laughs> because the app isn't going to solve your problem. Mm. It's probably going to make it more difficult for right. you because there's one more thing to worry about. Right. It's a, it's about the individual, and that's it, once the individual figure out figures out what their strengths and weaknesses are when it comes to time management, that's when they'll find the solutions, and I help them to get there. Mm, very, very insightful, and I, I mean, you know, I mean, it's so man, so so relevant the the subjects that you're you're speaking on today. Uh, what is your what you would call what I call your secret sauce, or that thing that you do? That where you're able to help them uh, overcome these issues? Well, part of it is, uh, I like to call it self-awareness. Because there are people that think they're defensive, we're cynical, we're, you, we're too busy. And we don't look internally. We look externally. We look at the news and we look at all this, these things going on around us. But I teach people to look internally to become self-aware. Mm -hmm. What are those strengths? What are those weaknesses? And I try to get them to believe in themselves and believe that they can make a difference in their organization, make a difference in their lives if they get their time under control. 
and, and what I, and that's not by let me just pump you up with motivational words. I try to teach actions, and that's the biggest difference is that when it comes to anyone's professional transformation, it's impossible without action. And the proof is, and this is what I like to, to look at, that, that magic that's out there is, how do I know that I'm doing well? Is I see people reducing their email inbox from 18,000 to less than 100 in a week after I spent time with them. And that's an actual example. I have, I, I see, uh, today alone, I received three referrals from people I've worked with in the past who sent their friends to me. That's when I know that I'm doing my job the right way. Mm. And that's, and that's, well, it's a lot, it's a whole lot less effort on going out there trying to find sales and services. But when people are coming to you, it means that you're doing something right. Mm -hmm. And and it it makes you feel good. And it's interesting because I, my business model is wrong, by the way, in two spots. (laughs) I deal with a lot of unemployed people without money. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, and, and, and I I deal with people that that I should kick them out of the nest after a while and let them fly on their own, and they're not going to come back to me. And when they don't, it actually means that I've succeeded, and my business will grow when they start sending others to me to do the same. And and I I was laughing at this just the other day that it's an interesting business model to run off of because a lot of it is repeat sales. A lot of people build their business off of that. My repeat sales are people telling others about me, friends and family and colleagues. Mm. Okay. Do you work with organizations like a, an unemployment service that refer them to you, or do you go directly to the, the individuals who need help? Yeah, I've worked with career centers. I've worked with uh, job-seeking groups. Uh, in fact, when I was unemployed, as a speaker and trainer, I continued to, while I was looking for a job, going from Maine down to Boston, uh, going to job-seeking groups and libraries and, and networking with people and teaching them how to find a job. And I initially thought I had a credibility issue. It, it actually turned into something pretty special because they were we were all sharing ideas together. And it became this phenomenal conversation about how to do it. And so I spend some time um, with locally and regionally uh, that hold a lot of these type sessions for people looking for jobs. I do meet with organizations um, when they feel that their overall employee base is starting to get disengaged. And as you mentioned, I do meet with individuals on a regular basis. Okay. So let's step back a bit and tell us about where you started and what motivated you to move into the area that you're in now? Well, there's a couple things. On on the public speaking front, I am painfully shy and introverted. And I was a communication major in college hoping to solve that. It didn't. I was told for the next 18 years I couldn't communicate. And what I found was I joined Toastmasters International because I needed to do something to help out. And that led down this path to start, you know, all of a sudden, this guy who was told he couldn't communicate was being tapped on the shoulder at work to teach others and managers how to communicate. And I said, who, me, this guy? And it gave me a ton of confidence. And I found out that it wasn't my communication skills that were the issue. It was my confidence. And I built a lot of confidence. I built out these programs to help others to improve their communication uh, their networking and how to interview and this built into the program, which led me to the National Speakers Association. And all of a sudden I found myself, people were calling me up saying, I'll pay you to speak. And it's a beautiful thing. On the time management piece, you know, as I was on this roller coaster ride of a career early on, I vowed to never have a boss tell me you're not succeeding because you didn't get something done by the time that you got it done. And I had, I became a consummate time management teacher and student uh, for, uh, I've been doing that for 20 plus years. And as I continue to compile notes on what I could do to become more efficient, people were coming to me saying, Hey, can you teach me how to do that? I sit down and go through their email with them. And then I'd come up with these strategies on what they could do to improve, whether they were working with uh, managing teams or whether they were project manager type positions. And I've been keeping these notes for 15 years now, and I've been teaching internally and externally 
uh, people how to work on their time. And last October, I decided to put all those notes together and put it out. The, uh, one of my books called Time Management Manifesto. Okay. So, what are some of the what are some of the popular misconceptions about the services that you provide, and how do you dispel those? Well, on the on the public speaking side, I teach the value of confidence over communication because I lived it. Mm-hmm. And when you start to become confident, your communication will follow. And, and many people also believe they don't have anything to talk about. Oh, I live a boring life. I don't have anything to, to go out to, to tell anyone about. But I teach everyone that they have a story to tell. And it's a matter of, uh, it's really a matter of how effectively they can relate to audiences. And most speakers, it, it, the misconception is I have to tell a story that's going to motivate them and, and, and keep them inspired. And motivational speaking is going away and it's being replaced with content speech. People obviously do want to be motivated, but you can't have empty motivation. You have to have strong content. And that's what I teach people. And you do this through selfless speaking. Because when we all start as speakers, if you think about it in going through school and when you start working and giving some presentations, we start saying, well, how did I do? How do I feel when I'm giving this presentation? And I tend, are they going to get it? And it's all about me talk. But over time, when you do it enough, you start feeling and understanding the selflessness piece of it. What's my audience going to take away from this? Are they going to be able to do something with it? Are they going to be able to retain the information? Are they going to become better because of what they've said? And when you do that, they become so much stronger at what they're doing. And that, the misconception is you can't just go out there and talk about yourself and, and hope that it, it gets out there. You have to absolutely relate to the audience. Mm. Here's, here's, what, here's what came to me as, as you were speaking, and I extrapolated some of the content from what you were saying, but – Really, at its essence, a fear of speaking is really a very selfish act because what you're doing is, <laughs> is you're thinking about yourself. Now, when you take it off of yourself and you put it onto someone else, the audience, if, how are you going to help them, then it improves. I'll, I'll give you an example. Somebody told me that if you don't go out there and give the best speech you've ever given, I'm going to take out your whole family. Then all of a sudden <laughs> – it's it's about my family, and I'm going to go out there, and I'm going to kill it. I'm not going to worry about lines or notes. I'm just going to speak from the heart. So what's your, what's your feedback on that? And that just came to me. Uh, I, I think you're absolutely right, uh, but y- you you get rid of that fear by uh, by becoming prepared and doing what you're doing. It, it's interesting. I wrote my, my second book was called From Fear to Success, a Practical Public Speaking Guide, mm-hmm. and the editor and, and book promoter said, well, I need you to write a chapter about how people can take some type of medication to stop their shaking and to get over their fear of public speaking. And I said, I can't do that because you're solving this one event. Mm. I teach that you have to solve the long term. Mm. And the long term is solved when you become better prepared at speaking, Mm. when you teach people that just winging it isn't a good strategy. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. When you when you start becoming familiar, even when I teach people how to become better impromptu speakers, in reality, you're talking about stuff that you know, and that comes through confidence. Mm-hmm. It comes through preparation. Mm-hmm. I mean, just look at Robin Williams, one of the best-known impromptu comedians that ever lived. Mm-hmm. Um, he he always was known for his his impromptu speaking, but the reality is, it was all st- the, the majority of stuff was things that he had in his in, in his repertoire and things he had in his back pocket the whole time. And that's, that gives you the confidence to be able to then communicate effectively. Mm, very insightful. Now, what would you say is the, the main reason that individuals, prospective clients, decide not to utilize your services? And how do you convince them otherwise? Well, sometimes – Individual clients and meeting order organizers, they go with the cheapest option. Mm. 
unfortunately, they often get what they pay for. And I, I commit to ensure that every dollar I'm paid comes with a long-lasting value add to any organization, to an individual. And the added value comes with the unique ability to teach time management through personal stories and lessons learned versus a list of ideas. A lot of times when we teach time management, it's let me give you a list of 20 things and you run away and implement them and your time management will be better. But when you connect stories to it, now here's the connection between public speaking and time management. When you connect stories to it, it resonates with people, it relates to them, and they will remember it and thus start to do it. Um, and the information will stick when it's relatable. And it, it, when it comes to time management, I teach strategies versus thinking tactically. And when you start thinking strategically, you get a whole lot better at it. When it comes to the professional development, whether it's interviewing, resume writing, networking, most people want to be better at what they do, but they're not sure where to start. And I give them the, I'm going to teach you, I'm a very simple guy and I teach very simple principles. And I emphasize at the beginning, the self-assessment piece. So I don't waste my time teaching you things you don't want to know or you don't buy into. I want to teach you the things that you feel you need to. And so it's the starting point. And and then we start building from there. And that's the difference is to build that confidence up. And building confidence isn't about feeding people with those inspirational words. It's about showing them where in the journey they need to go, help to point them in that direction, and then over time, kick them out of the nest and let them fly on their own. And and as I mentioned before, content is the key to all of that. Makes a lot of sense. Now, with the the last minute that we have here, I'd like for you to convey one central thought, theme, or concept where if the listener does not get anything else out of the discussion that we've had, this is what I'd like to leave them with. Could you do that? You can transform into who you want to be professionally when you become aware of who you are and your opportunities, that you believe that you can make a difference, and then more importantly, you take the action to make it happen. Well said. Well said. Now, if the listeners would like to learn more about your services, contact your organization, uh, how, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, they can get a hold of me at transformationtom.com. Okay, great. Well, Tom, thank you so much for coming on the show. That was very valuable information that you shared with the listeners, and we really appreciate it. Well, thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.